Well, greetings all. Been thinking about this for a while. Been watching and talking with and stuff, you know, a lot of folks on both sides of the border and looking at the media and putting the pieces together. And this has just been on my mind for a little bit. You know, most of you know that I spent the majority of my adult life south of the border. That's where I cranked out a couple of university degrees and then went on to my, I call it corporate North America life, living in various states and various different cultures. So imagine living in the Midwest, Nebraska, living in both the desert and the mountains of Arizona, living in Southern California and spending time amongst the rich and famous in Santa Barbara slash Montecito, California, down in Malibu, Venice, you know, uh, Marina del Rey, and then over to the other side of the country and to South Florida, but a lot of traveling throughout the entire nation of the US. And I experience a lot of things, you know, for the most part, what I do know of the US is a tremendous amount of the pursuit of excellence by the producers, by the doers, by the makers, by the folks that decided that they're going to make life better, that they are going to make life better. They're not gonna take, they're gonna go make. And unlike Canada here a little bit, which was a little disappointing after reinserting myself in the Canadian culture, one of the things that I noticed, which was a huge difference as compared to when I left in the early 70s, was this dialogue that was taking place across the media, this thing that I was always going on about, what's the government going to do for me? What's this project or program or, or subsidy or something along that line? And I get it because you know, the whole tax structure changed to continue to take more and more and more from the working people and from the productive people as well, too. I don't mean the working people aren't productive. What I mean for the people are the producers, the makers, the guys that are making payroll, doing all those sorts of things. So they continue to suck more out. So people said, well, then maybe I better ask for more to come back in. And I get that. And I get the dichotomy in the states as well, too. I, I see it. I, I see it and feel it very well. I mean, there are very good people on both sides of the aisle, left and right. But what I do know is happening south of the border is this thing in which this, this aggressive desire by a certain group of people, and I'll call it a cabal almost, group of people, to take control from the, from the groups, from the masses, to be able to provide them stuff like free stuff we know there's no such as free stuff but free things in order to you know make them feel good if everybody remembers the whole thing that went around about the obama phone right i just want a free phone i want this free stuff and that free stuff and all this sort of thing that, that went on and i do understand the whole thing about safety nets i do understand the thing about having personal liberties but what i do know that's happening actually on both sides of the border is a whole thing about the restriction of the individual, the individual right, individuality is being stripped in the media for the message of, I guess, uh, you know, central control. You know, as I always say, is that socialism is great for everybody except the socialists. If, if you look at, at history and the history of socialism, you'll see the, the backs of the people and of the masses have been literally broken and they're stooped and lost their, their ingenuity and their productivity and everything else along that line and have created a, a, a group, I'll call it almost an oligarchy of folks that are just feeding off of people on that side of it. Not really wanting the masses to rise, but to keep them subdued and down. And that's what you see happening right now. I mean, let's face it. On, on south of the border right now, the one thing I know is true to be absolutely certain, one of the things that is, that is happening right now is that nobody is out there voting, quote, for Biden. It is an anti-Trump movement. And yeah, people, a lot of people, and I get it, a lot of people may not like to quote the style of the man. But it's like there's so many people that are just playing checkers. You're not looking at the policies. You're not looking at the things. The, 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 the turnaround of the American economy from some of these eight years that said, hey, it's the new normal is you're just not going to grow. That just give up your rights. Let it all go out to the rest of the world and that sort of thing and really strip the power from the producers. I mean, the absolute producers and the ingenuity of Americans 
right? And just like do it. I remember back when Clinton suddenly was giving away all this technology to the Chinese. I mean, I was living there at the time and I'm like going, what's he doing? He's taking advanced technologies and say, here, you have it. Okay, you have it now. And of course, we, we've watched the rise of the Chinese Communist Party and their absolute autocratic bullshit that is really keeping 1. what 2 billion, 1.4 billion people in a state of, of enslavement and maybe, maybe 10, 12 million that have actually grown and prospered a whole lot. Yeah, it's, it's really quite incredible. So I, I look at this and I'm saying, uh, regardless of which way the election goes south of the border, the producers, the doers, the makers, the people who actually make payroll, not the people who are just getting by, not the people that just insist and continue to take a wage. I don't care what your status is in the company. If you just continue to insist on taking a wage hourly or or whatever it is, and you say, I know, I'm better, I'm best. It's, look at me, look at my title, look at the things. I got a car, I got a white hat, I got whatever. On that side of it, it's like, give me a break. Say, uh, you know, in my entire career, making <laughs> money and rearranging companies, restructuring companies, watching some bullshit owners and watching some owners, owners, holders, that owners that have been just amazing, and everything else in between, I understand that people from all walks of life and all stuff and all colors, left or right or whatever, I do know that the one thing, the people that are the producers, the makers, the doers, the stuff, understand that this is a game of chess, not checkers. And the policies of the last four years have been absolutely amazing of taking a company that was on a downward trajectory and turning around an upward trajectory. And I know there are people that say, well, look at this COVID stuff. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, it, right now what's happening is nonsense. There's so many competing competing information sources and yet look when we look at the data you do not get rid of a virus do you understand that a virus exists and now with the thing being you know what the virus is right now the mind virus the mind virus of the takers the mind virus of the i'm just oh the mind virus is uh i'm disadvantaged the mind vi virus is i'm a victim and it's being perpetuated through a whole media group. <laughs> it's just, I mean, look, at corporate media is a shambles. I don't know if you saw, but Bezos is now saying, hey, I think maybe I got to buy CNN because they're just turned into a bullshit organization. I don't know if he'll do anything about it. You know, I don't know if he'll actually change the culture within CNN because he hasn't been able to within the Washington Post. Maybe that's his nature. I don't know. Because that, I, who knows? But I do know, again, the, the movers, the doers, the shakers, the makers, the folks that actually do write the paychecks, people that do actually want to grow their organizations, the people that do understand that the political structure is meant there for what? To protect people from, from enemies, both foreign and domestic, and create an environment of prosperity. And boy, oh boy, in the last four years, that's exactly what you've seen south of the board tremendous prosperity growth when it was on a downward spiral, getting rid of rules and regulations that were harmful to the growth of the American people. And for that matter, the Canadian people as well too. So anyways, that's why in the end, I've had to come out and say, that's exactly where I stand. And yeah, some of you are gonna be absolutely, oh, I can't believe Richard Garrett's doing that. Well, yeah, I am. Because I understand it doesn't make me better, just makes me understand that what has gone on for the last four years has been one of the most amazing turnarounds ever. Reminds me of the time when I was down there and Reagan came into power. You know, I was living in the world of 20% interest rates on a mortgage. And suddenly hope turned into reality self then. The unleashing of the American ingenuity and power came about. And what's happened the last four years reminds me exactly of what happened in 1980. Reagan, or Clinton was pretty good too, by the way. And that's guy on the other side of the aisle. He was pretty dark. Maybe what happened in the White House there wasn't so good, the Oval Office, but yeah, he was pretty good. And he worked with other folks and stuff. So anyways, 
that's where I come out. That's where I stand. Love me or hate me. I, I've never really cared about that ever in my life. So that's it. That's it from here. I'd say keep America great and it will stay great. Regardless of how the way that the election turns out on Tuesday, it will stay great because the nature of the American people is one of let's get it done. It just may be a little bit tougher if the left, if the liberals, if the socialists, whatever you want to call them, end up being the controller of the political. But you know what? It'll rebalance itself. You know why it'll rebalance itself? Because the people won't stand for the bullshit just like it happened under Carter. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. We made a big freaking mistake. So who knows? And if not, we'll get another four years of growth and such, and then we'll see what happens four years after that. I don't know. But regardless of what it is, it doesn't make anybody bad. It's just the way that it is. Okay? All right. That's it. From me, Richard Cameron, stating, keep America great, keep Canada great, keep North America great. Let's get on with it. And start thinking for yourself. Critical thinking is more important today than ever before. All right, everybody. Take care. Be well. Bye-bye.